Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over 6.1, titled Discrete, Random Variables, and Probability Distributions. So we're going to use some of the ideas that we talked about in 5.1 about probability and extend those ideas about probability to probability distributions. So first we have to talk about what a random variable is. A random variable is very similar to what an outcome is in a probability experiment. It's random, you don't know what what you're going to get when you run a probability experiment and we're going to deal with in this section 6.1 random variables that are numbers so we're going to look at outcomes and sample spaces that deal mainly with numerical outcomes so by variable we mean it can be a, a, be assigned a number and by random means that we don't know what outcome we're going to get it's decided by chance therefore we want to assign a probability to it now, the most important, one of the most important tools in statistics, whether it be our class or later on in statistics, is the use of probability distributions. Probability distributions, very much like frequency and relative frequency distributions that we did at the beginning of the class, help us organize our data and look at the likelihood of certain outcomes. Once we have an idea of the likelihood of certain outcomes, it can really help us with our estimations and predictions that we want to make in the future. So probability distributions are really important. Then, um, so uh, and then after that, we'll do the form. We'll look at some formulas for computing the mean, variance, and standard deviation of the discrete probability distribution, which we're going to look at in this section. So first, let's get back to random variables. So um, a random variable is is something that we're going to deal with here that takes on a quantitative value. And um, let's just look at some examples. So we, we generally assign random variables with a capital letter at X, Y, or Z. So let's say the experiment is um, I want to go out and get information on the number of classes that students are registered for this semester. So I let X be the random variable, the number of classes registered for this semester, and I go out and I start collecting information on the number of classes each student is registered for. So therefore, it's a random variable. Each, each selection or each time I collect data, I don't know exactly what the number of classes uh, any individual student has, but I do know that it basically could be anywhere from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So we would say the random variable could assume any one of these, these numbers. These are outcomes, and this is like the sample space from 5.1. Another example would be let y equal the age of a stat student in, uh, at CCD. So y could be anything from 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, et cetera, going on up. So any individual student is a random variable because before I collect that information, I don't know what their age is, but I do know what it possibly could be. So just a reminder about discrete and continuous. We're only focusing on discrete in 6.1 and 6.2. Um, so discrete, remember, is something that's countable, uh, so it can land on exactly these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and continuous is something that can end up being anywhere inside of an interval at any point. We'll look at continuous variables later. So discrete probability distributions. So we go from the actual random variable to create a distribution, which with each outcome, we write out the probability. So sometimes we can do that in a table, like you see here. You're also going to see this graph where we can put it into like a, uh, a histogram or something like that. And there's also formulas that tell us the probability of each outcome, which we're actually going to see the binomial formula coming soon. Right now, we're just going to look at tables and histograms. So probability distribution is just a way of listing each outcome, like we've seen in the sample space, all the possible uh, values of a random variable and the probability of each of those happening. I think this is an example about the number of points you can be awarded from a hockey contest. So if you lose, you get zero points. If you tie, you get one point. You can't get two, but if you get three point, or sorry, if you win, you get three points. And say let's let's say that this is a particular team's chances of getting each point. So they have a 30% chance of losing, 20% chance of tying, and oh, that should be 0 0.3, excuse me. That's my error, 0 0.3. Uh, sorry, 0 0.5 should be the probability of getting uh, X points awarded. 0 0.5 right there instead of 3, excuse my error. So from that, we could, from this table, you could, cre you know, you could create the table by hand and then create this histogram as well to show the probability of each event. 
So also from these discrete probability distributions, we want to be able to create or excuse me, compute the mean and standard deviation. You know, the mean is what we're going to call the expected value. So uh, it's what well, remember probability is a long term estimation of how often something's going to happen. And the law of large numbers shows that if we run the experiment many times, that the probability will get closer to the true probability from the theoretical model. So this mean, what we're going to find is an expected value of what we would expect to get maybe for the number of points that the hockey team would get after a certain number of games, many, many games. So here's the formula. The mean is equal to the sum of each outcome times the probability of each outcome. So simply what you need to do, here's a discrete probability distribution of age. Uh, so they gave four different outcomes from 15 to 18 and the probability that the student would be that age. So it's really simple. You just take, to find the mean, you just take the outcome times its probability, each outcome times its probability, so 15 times 0 0.07, 16 times 0 0.17, 17 times 0.29, and 18 times 0.47. Multiply all those first, and then you add them all up, and that's what the sigma is for. So first in brackets, you multiply each outcome times its probability, then you add them all up, you get the mean. 17.16. Now, clearly nobody is 17.16 years of age. They're either 17 or 18 or how they feel about it. So remember, it's the expected value if we were to take an average over many, many courses with many, many students, we would see that the average age would be about 17.16. Also, the standard deviation. Don't get scared by the formulas. We're going to work with the same distribution. We're going to follow the definition formulas and not use the computational formulas. So this is very much like the standard deviation that we computed by hand in classwork. I believe it was number three. So what we do is we take each data value. So in this case, the data value is the random variable. And we subtract the mean. What do we do after that? We square it to make sure that the deviations don't cancel. But we also have this extra element where we multiply by the probability of that outcome because we don't have a sample space here or a sample size to divide by. We do all that first and then we add them all up. So it's going to show this. The, remember the mean is 17.16. So to do the variance first, you take 15 minus the mean, which is 17.16, square it, and then multiply it by its probability. They do that for each data value. They're not showing the 16 and the 17. And then they get to the 18, 18 minus the mean squared times its probability of 0.47. So you do those, do that process, the data value, sorry, the outcome minus the mean squared times its probability for each data value, add them all up, and this is the population variance, 0.8944. To get the standard deviation from the variance, you take the square root. So the square root of 0.8944 is 0.9457. So we'll work on the, those in class doing practicing the mean and the standard deviation. But the big thing I want you to remember concept-wise is that remember from, from outcomes and sample spaces before, we can start creating probability distributions. Probability distributions are really, really important. The big thing that you should remember from Chapter 5 that comes into 6.1 is that the probability of any outcome is between 0 and 1. So you can see all that. And then the probability, if you sum all the probabilities in the sample space, you should always get one. I cannot emphasize how important that is to remember those two things. The sum of all the probabilities must always equal one, and each probability value is between zero and one. So uh, keep that in mind, and we're going to start looking at distributions on next class. We'll see you then.